Oh, thank you. Thank you. Please help me welcome Tony Phelan. Joan Rader. Belle Powley. Leanne Schreiber. And executive producer and director, Susanna Fogel. Shall we sit? Um, forgive me for holding my phone. I'm not checking Instagram. I'm just checking my notes, if that's OK. Um, all right, we don't have a lot of time, but we have a lot to cover, because this was spectacular. And everyone feels it, and we all feel it. So I'm going to ask each of you a little something. And if it leads to a conversation, that's fantastic, even better. So the um, pressure's on. The pressure's on, okay. me and you. Um, Tony, Joan. We've been friends a very long time. We've raised families together. We've worked together. We've lived together. You know how blown away I am by this work. Um, and you know that I'm going to want to know where it came from, where the idea came from, where, where the first time you heard about Meep and why that inspired you to, to follow that story. But I also have to ask you, given that I'm someone who also has a husband of 30 years, how on earth do you make something so beautiful with your spouse? So maybe, Joan, you want to take that? Um, yeah, we work together. Um, oh, yeah, we're together all the time. Um, we have had every fight, every conversation. We've, there's nothing more here. You make it sound <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> um, no, it's great to work. It's great to work together. It, it's, it's, it's great. Um, and your first question, yeah. where did we come up with me. Where did we? Where did this idea come from? Um, we. Do you mind if I take it, Tony? Please. See, this is why it's the magic. Um, <laughs> we were in Amsterdam about uh, seven years ago with our kids, and we were going through the Anne Frank Museum, and this fact about me popped out that, at me that she was this young woman, newly married when um, Otto Frank asked her if she would help hide his family. And I'm standing with my son, who was a young person, newly in the throes of this love affair. And I was thinking, oh my god, Meep's him. And he's entirely ill-equipped to hide anybody, you know, I mean, and I said, you know, he's brilliant, but he's also sort of like moody if, he, if his boyfriend doesn't text him back. And I suddenly, you know, uh, and then we went to the, uh, the Frank's apartment and across the street is a park. And there were these little girls doing cartwheels in the park. And I thought, Anne Frank was just a girl doing cartwheels in a park. Um, you know, and, and when history happened to her. And, and suddenly, we wanted to tell the story of just the ordinary people who history happened to. Meep was just an ordinary person. And she said yes when Otto asked her to help hide his family. But I, I don't think she knew what she was doing. I don't think she knew what she was saying yes to. And I'm certain there were days where she felt terrified or she was sick or she didn't want to do it. But the, the heroism of just continuing to say yes day after day after day was moving to us. And we just wanted to see. Um, you know, the humanity and the ordinary people. I've, I've been talking for a long time now, and I'm going to stop. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's great. And I remember when you, pit, you, know, you practiced the pitch for Meep, and we were there, and, and the passion the two of you guys had, which leads me, which leads me to another, uh, another point. Um, you, like many of us on the, on the panel, started in the theater. 
Um, and then you've had such great success in network television, Grey's Anatomy, and a current hit that's on another network, CBS, that people watch about firefighters. But for me, I feel like with a small light, you've come the closest to who you both are as writer creators, like in your soul. And I, I'm really interested, you know, given that you have always been people who want to tell family stories and personal stories and merge comedy and drama and history. In what ways your experience in television sort of gave way, it sort of paved the way for you guys to finally do something like this? Well, I think that we both, I mean, Joan is famous for always saying that she hates olden times. So uh, I, 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 I majored in history in college. I, you can't get her to go to a museum or do, or do any, anything like that. That's not hates, fair. That, that's Oldham. not fair. See, this is, now we're going to, we'll fight about this later on. But, but I, I, I think that, that the, the lessons that we learned doing shows like Grey's were that you can have drama and comedy coexist. And if you work with actors who are skillful enough that they can pivot between the two effortlessly, that is when you can really get an audience to just connect in a way. And the other thing is if you have writers who understand how to write that. And we were lucky enough to work with uh, Bill Harper and Ben Essler and Alana Jacobson, all of whom- Alyssa. We, Alyssa, sorry. I'm sorry, Alyssa, she's here. Uh, but all of whom were writers that we'd worked with before, but they all have that facility. And, and so when you say to yourself, we want to make a show about history that does not feel like a historical show, that feels contemporary and feels immediate and allows the audience to connect to the characters in a much more visceral way. I mean, we say things like we wanted to wipe the cobwebs off, we wanted to kind of clear the sepia out, and then once Susanna became involved, then it really became practical about how do we do that. Yeah. It's the perfect segue to you, Susanna, really, because, um, you know, the sign of, of great casting is when you, you as an audience cannot imagine, you cannot imagine those roles being played by anybody else. They become those people, and they will forever be that way. So you guys, you can't ever do anything else. This will be it because it will ruin it for us. Um, no, but I, I'm really quite interested in, in the casting process and how it played a role in this amazing genre-bending dance that you did of blending a coming-of-age story, a romantic comedy, and this legendary, tragic, historical story. Um, I mean, I think, well, Belle was the first person that we asked, so Thankfully, she was really right for the role. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we were looking for somebody who we, it's kind of a version of what Tony was saying. We just wanted somebody who could handle every dimension that this character had. Um, we wanted somebody who could handle um, the drama and the gravity of those moments, but also have a light touch and have a charisma to take us through the more banal, just being in your 20s moments. Um, and that the co constantly having that contrast between the, the, small, the small challenges and the big challenges and the smaller stakes issues and the bigger stakes issues is something that, um, you know, we just needed those to sort of, um, enhance each other, like the more she's dealing with a small issue with a friend or her husband, the more impactful it is when she suddenly has to pivot into this really serious situation that's more about the stakes of the war. So yeah, I mean, we just wanted somebody who we knew could do all of that. And Belle's work has, has shown that spectrum. So anyway, we just, we loved her. Um, and then uh, with Liev, yeah, we really, we really wanted, um, just somebody who would bring an unexpected uh, take to this character. And specifically, there's a tendency just to see Otto Frank as the victim because he's adjacent to Anne, who's this incredibly famous victim of this time. So we, we wanted somebody who'd sort of bring a, um, I don't know, just a, a kind of like a, a quiet intellect to it, but also a strength to Otto so that we're not just seeing him as the victim of history, but just also as just a man who's trying to be a father and a mentor to 
me and deal with his own suffering, but also be a patriarch. I don't know. There was just like more of a well-rounded quality that Liev brought to the role just by being sort of a dimensional, strong actor. Great. Well, to you, Belle, if you don't mind, um, rarely are World War II stories told from the point of view of an unlikely female heroine. Um, you do such a beautiful job of, of creating for us this brave, compassionate, and funny young woman. Uh, I'm curious if there was something in the story of Meep, in the script, or in, in what you read about her, that either spoke to you, that felt familiar to you, or did it feel like this amazing, exciting challenge? A bit of both. Like, listen, I'm old. I, I've been working now for nearly 15 years, and my whole career I've been searching for roles like this. And most of my career, people, people aren't making shows about women, and people aren't making shows about women like me. So this is really a first for me, and I feel incredibly honored and excited that finally people are you know, making shows about incredible women. Um, but also, like Joan, like, I kind of hate the olden times. Um, yeah, I struggle with period pieces. Belle I, and I are going to a museum tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I do. I, I've always shied away from them. I, I feel distanced from them when I'm watching them and when I'm trying to be in them. But it was something about this script and Tony and Joan's writing that I immediately felt connected to this character. And I think it's in part your writing, but also that she was an incredibly modern woman. Yeah. She was so vivacious and, like, I don't know, she got together with someone who was like already married and she didn't want kids and she was so incredibly brave. Like she was very modern for her time, but also it is in their writing and this contemporary tone that made it very easily accessible for me. Um, you know, all young women can relate to me, you know, partying too much and being newly in love and like, you know, fighting with your best friend and your partner. And I think that way into this political and historical landscape that we all know too well was a, an accessible way for me to kind of attach myself to this historical person. That's great. Um, Liev, you know, I know you're outspoken and involved in the current plight uh, uh, in the Ukraine. And I, I'm curious as how the current state of the world played a role in your decision to want to play Otto Frank and maybe even in the way that you portrayed him. Uh, I like olden times. <laughs> I really like olden times. And I, I suddenly feel so out of place <laughs> up here. Um, you know, it just, when I read it, it just seemed like the right story at the right time. And I had you know, been on a television show for about eight years. I wasn't particularly eager to work. And I was with my kids on the couch watching the war in Ukraine evolve and wondering how I was going to explain it. And I got this script, and I just thought, that's good. That's an easy way. Let someone else explain it. <laughs> and it felt like that. That's great. Well, it really, it really speaks to a, a, a big takeaway, I think, uh, for, for a small light. And this is really for anybody who, who wants to talk about why this show, I mean, to me, it feels incredibly um, important and urgent and current and relatable, despite the fact that it's a story about Nazi Germany and their invasion of Amsterdam and what we all thought that was. But how do you guys feel, why do you feel that it's, it's immediate, that it's current, that? Well, we, we've been getting this question a lot, obviously. Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> and we answer it in all kinds of different ways. <clears throat> and the truth is, it's heartbreaking that it's so relevant. It's heartbreaking. Um, when, uh, when, when, uh, the, Fra when Meep and Jan and the Franks before the war 
you know, when they were, uh, you know, they had, they were living in a modern world. They had toasters and washing machines. They had refrigeration. And I don't think that they could believe in their modern world what was happening. And um, I feel the same way often, that I can't believe in our modern world the divisions and the hatred and the nationalism and, and all of it. Um, and um, I struggle to remain hopeful. I don't want to be cynical. And so, um, so truly Meep is, is Meep and the many people. What you're saying is that if we had paid a little more attention to olden times. <laughs> not wrong. You're not wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, Leo Shriver. The, <laughs> here every t Tuesday night. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I'll finish my thought. Um, Sorry, the, the thought is that, that there is a, that truly we cannot just give in to hopelessness and cynicism. And so the inspiration of Meep and of people like her to step up, to be kind. Uh, uh, yeah. And I, I, I think, too, the exciting thing for us is the fact that we have partners with Nat Geo and with Disney Plus and that this show can get into homes and be seen by a younger audience who might be living in a circumstance where they're hearing things that are less welcoming, less inclusive, and, and maybe we can educate and change some hearts and minds and, and, and just try and do something to push back against the onslaught of Our daughter hatred. was watching this and she kept turning to us and saying, did that really happen? With shock. And it really happened. These were real people. This really happened. And our intention is to honor the people and by telling the story, telling their story well, we continue to honor them. That's great. And it's true. And you, <laughs> you did it beautifully. Um, so, you know, and the thing about it is that it seems without agenda. It seems like you're telling the story without, despite the fact that at the end of the day, you are telling a story that is so unbelievably important and relevant for us to watch right now. You're, I'm curious if, Susanna, if you were aware at the time, if that was something in your mind in collaborating with the DP and collaborating with wardrobe and how you were going to depict a, 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 a despicable time in history and at the same time be able to capture the bubbly romance and humor of this young woman. Yeah, I mean, it, it really was on the page to begin with. Um, but, but I think throughout, we just, um, the, these characters didn't know the end of the story. Every day, they just lived for the stakes of what that day, you know, were for them. Um, and they would turn to each other at dinner parties and say, like, it's bad, right? Is it bad? I don't know. It's not that bad. I mean, it's kind of like we do, and then it gets really bad, and we're like, oh, shit, that got really bad. Um, but I think I, we just wanted to show that that, I don't know, it, with every choice they're making, they're not making a choice to dress and act as though they're in a very serious period piece with high stakes. They're just getting up and putting on the sweaters that they bought when they went into a store and picked a sweater that was colorful. You know, we just wanted them to actually just be people making choices to live, not just getting up in the morning and saying, how can I reverently live for this very serious time that I'm living in that will be looked back upon with great drama, you know? Right. So, so That's it was... That's what I was thinking. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it came down to, to all of the choices, you know, um, in hiring... Um, the department heads just not looking for the people who could do the perfect oil painting version of a period piece, but the people who went into their job with a sense of just um, emotional intelligence about the characters. Like, 
just just having somebody who's not always perfectly there's a tendency with period pieces that if if your show is in the 60s everyone is wearing clothes from the 60s that are iconically 60s but the truth is people are wearing their dad's coats or they're wearing clothes that are don't really fit them from another time or that they bought in a shop i mean just really those little choices um and trying to to drive all of those creative decisions from that character place, um, make things feel more authentic and modern. But really the modernness is just that we're not like looking at it with this distance of like how do we paint, do make this chocolate box version of this time. And, and you know? there, many of our collaborators too, this was their first period piece as well. Our, our costume designer Matthew had done Search Party, which we just loved and the clothes in that show are so much a part of the storytelling, and that's what he brought. He brought this real attention to te detail and passion to have the people just, just to have the clothes feel lived in, but to have them make a statement. Yeah. Yeah, there's something unselfconscious about it. And, it. and also in the ways, you know, Liev, you've played a lot of dark characters and intense characters, but there's something unbelievably, I mean, that's right. <laughs> and, and there's something unbelievably heroic about, about um, Otto Frank, but also unbelievably tender and, and not self-conscious about the way you play them. And I'm curious, Belle, as well, if there was something about playing them very much as though they were living their moment today and not, and not the echoes of what all this is gonna mean later that was done so beautifully. There were components of my research, uh, you know, the, the people at the Anne Frank House were very generous with us with their time and their resources. And there were things that caught my attention. And I thought, you know, this really, in many ways, wasn't about the Franks. You had this new perspective, which was me. And so you had the luxury of seeing them in a new way. And so the stuff that caught my attention when I was going through the documents that they'd given us and looking at the footage was the stuff that Otto didn't want in Anne's diary. And also this other piece about Otto that he was, um, he, he really enjoyed being a German. Like he was a German. And what one of the most tragic elements f f of this story for him, I think, was that he was no longer allowed to be a German because he was a Jew. And I remember that when I was a little kid and my mother told me the story of the Holocaust, I thought, well, I'll just tell them I'm not a Jew. That's what I would do. And that I, th the innocence of that thought, like bringing that to a character was like, I don't associate with any of that stuff because I'm not religious. I'm, in fact, I'm a German. I'm more German than Hitler. It doesn't matter because he's pegged you as this. And I thought that piece was interesting. So to kind of, you know, also that sort of Teutonic, the cliche Teutonic control would create a nice dynamic because ultimately he would have to yield it all up to this person. Um, was that your question? Yeah. <laughs> You know, sometimes yes. when you do these press tours for a long time, the actors don't sit through the screenings. They go out and they drink. <laughs> I should just let you know that for your next screening. Um, Belle, was there something about it as well that felt very much like you could play it in a, like, like it was today? I mean, it's what Susanna said, like, Tony, Joan, Susanna remind us every day, like, don't play the end. Right. Because what's the point? But also that presence, A, comes in the writing, but also working with incredible actors like Liev and Joe in particular. Like, it was so easy working with them. Like, you always say, it's like tennis. <laughs> it is. It's like tennis. Well, it is. It is. Like, when, you, when you meet you, an actor like that, it's yeah. extraordinary. Like someone who like, it was so actually easy. listens to like you. The, it's in the writing and working with you. Like, it was so fun. What did you say? I said... <laughs> <laughs> I said, when you meet someone, you work... It's not... You know, so many actors know what they're going to do. They worked it out ahead. They watched that Michael Caine video. <laughs> And they know what they're going to do with their prop, and they're going to show up on set, and they're going to do their bit, and it's going to be an Oscar. And then you have people who receive you, 
and like listen to you and respond in this incredibly interesting way. If that's what I was trying to say. I know that's what you're trying to say. <laughs> I was like, the first five minutes of working with her, I was like, well, if she's in charge, we're going to be okay. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I well, well, I just want to congratulate all of you because really you, you, you have made a, a beautiful piece of television that I hope lasts forever. I'm a, you know, I'm a crazy fan of this project. So I hope everybody is hashtagging and tweeting and Instagramming and watching it and telling everybody to watch it because I think you really have succeeded in letting us viewers know that every today is the history of tomorrow and you every decision you make today it will be looked back upon as though it were history and you can't live that way but you can in a way you can make choices that you could stand behind. So I, I took that away from it, and I congratulate all of you, and I hope you will too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.